Welcome everybody. My name is Elizabeth Aloni and I'm with Schneps Media. Schneps Media is the largest local media company. We publish over 70 newspapers, magazines, websites, webinars, podcasts, and events throughout Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, Westchester, Long Island, and Philadelphia. Today, we are thrilled to be able to bring to you this webinar, Common Myths About Returning to College as an Adult, brought to you by CUNY SPS. And I am thrilled to be able to introduce to you Luis Fuentes. Welcome, Luis. So, oh, I called you Luis. We talked about that. Lucas, before the webinar, we talked about people call you Luis. <laughs> not a problem, not a problem. We go way back now, so it's, it's more than fine. Absolutely, Lucas of one day, so forgive me. Um, Lucas is a director of undergraduate and graduate admissions and has been with City University of New York School of Professional Studies since 2015. For 19 years, he'd been an admissions and enrollment professional, working to help students navigate the college search and admissions process. His work at CUNY has been committed to specifically assisting working adults apply for transfer admission to the fully online bachelor's programs that CUNY SPS has to offer. Welcome, Lucas. Good to be with everyone this morning. Happy to have you. So Lucas is going to share with us a presentation. And he's going to go ahead and share his screen to do so. And it's really a wonderful opportunity to talk to everyone about returning to college as an adult. All right, you should be able to see my screen now, is that right? Yes, perfect. Great, 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 great. Well, again, my name is Lucas Sefuentes, Director of Admissions. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, if you're like me, hopefully uh, you've already maybe gotten out of the apartment, out of the house. Uh, and taken your walk, because if you're like me, you realize uh, it gets dark basically at three o'clock <laughs> every single day now. So I hope you've had your coffee and we're all alert and awake because uh, I wanna make sure everyone understands in the room, uh, please excuse the baby face. Folks will sometimes ask me when I am graduating from college. I take that as a compliment though, uh, but as Elizabeth just mentioned, for almost 20 years now, my entire professional career has been devoted to helping students navigate the college process. And then most recently uh, at the City University of New York at CUNY, uh, I've been at a campus that focuses on helping adult learners. I imagine like many of you in the room with me this morning, students that have started but not finished a bachelor's degree. You know, we do a lot of uh, uh, work in, in, in my office, in the Office of Admissions. Uh, we always joke around, we don't need to know the reasons why. Usually we just chalk it up to life happens. And that's why you perhaps did not finish your bachelor's degree. We care about the here and now and helping you navigate the process so that you can find yourself in one of our fully online classrooms. You can find yourself back on track, back on the path uh, towards graduating. Uh, uh, they're virtual these days, but one day we'll be back in uh, Lincoln Center. That's where we have our graduation commencement ceremonies. And, and you'll be crossing that proverbial stage with your uh, bachelor's degree diploma. So again, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, a few topics that we'll discuss because as I've worked with adult students over the past few years, specifically at SPS, you know, I've realized there's, a, there's some common denominators along the way. Folks will usually come and, and uh, they're calling us, they're emailing us, they're tapping at our front door. Uh, when we go back to life as normal, we have a campus that's uh, on 31st between six and seven, about half a block away from Penn Station, if you're familiar with Midtown, and we'll have students and they'll come in. And oftentimes they're unfortunately coming in with just a bunch of, um, you know, just incorrect assumptions. So I'm here this morning to help you dispel some of the myths that a lot of adult learners have when they're thinking about 
you know, is now my time? And, you know, is now a good time for me to jump back into the world of becoming a, a student, a part-time student, full-time student, just back in the world of being uh, a student earning their bachelor's degrees. So very quickly, some topics we'll discuss are uh, previous college credits. Um, all of our students, at least at CUNY SPS, but I imagine this matches a number of you in the room, have started but not finished, right? So that means you already have college credits under your belt. Uh, do those expire? What happens with those? What about standardized tests? What about high school information? Am I going to have to dig that up? What about financial aid? Is it affordable for me as an adult learner? Hey, CUNY SPS will, or any college for that matter, will you take into account my previous work experience? Maybe I've been you know, uh, a real estate agent for the last 12 years. Maybe I've worked at a marketing agency for six years. Uh, is that just quote unquote wasted time when it comes to college credit? Uh, we also get a lot of questions around the following. What if I wasn't a good student back in the day? What if maybe when I originally enrolled in college, I was focused on things the, other than my academics? And uh, that's maybe going to be reflected in your transcript. But is that just a giant wall in between you uh, moving forward in your education? And then last but not least, I know it's important for everybody. How in the heck are you going to fit? uh becoming a student again into your already busy life uh, uh, as elizabeth mentioned we'll have a little bit of time at the end for some q a uh, and as she also mentioned feel free to utilize uh i'm sure we're all experts in zoom these days feel free to jump into the uh chat feature to ask your questions uh i'm excited to engage with you this morning but let me just spell myth number one uh students will oftentimes just cold call my office and say hey you know, I attended college back in the 70s, back in the 80s. You know, I assume those college credits have expired and they just won't count, right? Uh, that is incorrect. The college credits that you're going to present in your transfer application generally do not expire. Uh, I often joke, milk expires. <laughs> college credits do not. And as long as you're including your full educational history, we're going to consider those for transfer credit, especially the general education courses. Things like your class, you know, courses that you took, uh, no matter when they were, five years ago, you know, 15 years ago, courses in those general ed topics like history, uh, English, you know, those gen ed courses have a high likelihood of transferring. If they're in the health sciences, courses like nursing uh, topics and those things, you know, we may need you to repeat those courses, but they can still come over as electives because of course, science uh, uh, changes where uh, if you took your history course, uh, most of that history is obviously still the same. Many colleges, and of course this includes SPS, we're gonna have some pretty flexible transfer credit policies. To be specific at SPS, we actually allow up to 105 credits to transfer over. That means that well over half, well over 75% actually of a typical bachelor's degree, you can transfer in. If you're unaware, a typical bachelor's degree, this is not only at CUNY or SPS, but really uh, uh, any accredited college is approximately 120, 120 credits. So you need that 120 uh, before you can cross that, that, that graduation stage. At CUNY SPS, we allow up to 105 credits, uh, really, really flexible, but that's really all with the aim. And you're gonna pick up on this because a lot of colleges and especially SPS, we focus on having policies and processes in place that help you to hit that finish line. Uh, I will say though, we need to see your full educational history. Uh, so it is in your best interest, sort of as a pro tip for you this morning, uh, start to gather your transcripts, your official academic records. If you've only attended one college, that's one transcript you need to get. If you've attended five or six, you do need, and it is in your best interest, to collect those five or six transcripts. One, you'll need them to complete your application for admission, but two, 
even if it's one course that you took maybe at a community college, you know, back in the 80s, that can come over. You know, those, co those credits don't expire and it is worth your time to get that transcript versus having to repeat one full class because we don't have that sitting in your file. So happy to report to you this morning, your college credits definitely do not expire. They will count. We're just gonna need to see all of that information in your application. Myth number two I would like to dispel for you is uh, this morning is that you know a lot of students will think, oh, I have to go back and I have to find my high school information. I'm gonna need to dig up uh, uh, my high school diploma or get a transcript from my high school. Uh, what about SAT scores, ACT scores? Uh, what if you took like a local regions test or something along those lines? Happy to report to you again, this is just us and a lot of colleges that work with adult students do this. We are going to make sure to remove those barriers from uh, you moving forward in the process. And so I can certainly tell you for SPS, but a lot of colleges do this, will not require, that's that, in other words, we will not need it, we won't need to see it, uh, high school information of any kind, recommendation letters, SAT, essay, all those tests, as long as you have a certain number of credits when you apply for transfer admission. To be specific at SPS, that number is 24. As long as you already have 24 or more credits sitting um, on one transcript or multiple transcripts, then we're never gonna ask to see uh, again, that high school information, just it's another thing that we do to make the process of transferring in as obstacle free as possible. All that said, a lot of colleges are still going to want to see a, a few supporting documents, as I mentioned, your transfer scripts, but then also a writing sample. Uh, and this is true for SPS as well. In addition to submitting an application online, in, admission, in addition to those uh, transcripts that we'll need to look at for admission, we are going to ask you to submit a writing sample. Uh, I know specifically for our programs that are fully online bachelor's degrees, there's a lot of writing involved. And so the admissions committee, which I chair, uh, and faculty want to gain an insight into your writing ability because there is so much writing that comes into play with a fully online bachelor's degree. But the main point here, you know, because a lot of students, you know, they get overwhelmed. They think, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever to track down all that old high school information. Uh, happy to report to you, as long as you have those 24 more credits, at least at SPS, but I know this goes for a lot of colleges out there, we're not going to need to see that high school information. Again, trying to remove as many obstacles as possible for you, for you as an adult learner. Myth number three I'd like to dispel for you uh, this morning is that financial aid will not be available to you. Uh, this is a very, very common question that my office fields. It is a common mistake that unfortunately adult learners will make. They'll assume that, you know, oh, I need to, financial aid is only for someone graduating uh, out of high school and then maybe rolling straight into, into their college, into a bachelor's degree. Uh, I've had students ask me, oh, there must be an age uh, 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 cap. You know, maybe if I'm 25 or older, I cannot apply for financial aid. Uh, big, big, big mistake. And so if I've done you anything this morning, hopefully I make sure you understand financial aid is available to anyone earning a bachelor's degree, right? So this is that FAFSA process. FAFSA standing for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It's one of our, it's one of everybody's favorites, right? It's free, you don't need to pay anything. I usually tell folks if you can handle, you know, uh, the online H&R Block or uh, I can't, oh, TurboTax is the other one. At least that's the one I use every year. If you can handle filing your taxes online, uh, from your, your desktop or your laptop from home, you can definitely handle submitting your FAFSA online. But that free application for federal student aid, there is no age limit. Uh, you know, you, you can be 16, you can be 62 or anything in between, higher than 62. I don't mean to put 
make it sound like 62 is the cap. Uh, uh, the only thing that the federal government and then obviously the school will need to know uh, is are you enrolling in a, an accredited bachelor's degree. And obviously SPS would count as that being a part of the CUNY system we're fully accredited, but the ability to submit that FAFSA and you know, you're really just giving a bunch of num numbers to Uncle Sam. If you list SPS, CUNY SPS or any of the colleges that you're looking at on that FAFSA, they're gonna share that information with all the individual colleges and then the colleges are able to process your financial aid and secure things like grants, uh, secure things like subsidized loans, all to help you uh, make the cost of education affordable. I also point out to adult students all the time, not only is financial aid available, to you, you may actually qualify for more financial aid as an adult versus when you maybe originally uh, submitted your very first FAFSA uh, back when you were uh, a bit younger. And usually that's because it, it has a lot to do with were you a dependent of your parents or of someone else when you first filed that FAFSA versus now. Uh, that's not to say that across the board, your uh, financial aid is always going to be greater. Everything has to do with your own individual uh, uh, financial situation. Uh, not for me to know. You submit all of that information uh, to Uncle Sam and he shares that with CUNY's financial aid office. But the great thing here is that, you know, if there are monies that we can secure for you, especially the free money, those are those grants. Free money is the best kind, isn't it? Uh, money you don't have to pay back. It's well worth your time to understand one, as an adult learner, you should definitely file a FAFSA. But two, uh, if those monies are able to be secured for you, we're gonna do that, that heavy lifting. Your part is to submit the FAFSA, then we do all the heavy lifting on our side and we always let you know uh, typically, it's what colleges will call an award letter, a financial aid award letter, and that award letter is going to detail for you exactly the kinds and the amounts of money that we're able to secure to help you make the cost of education affordable. Lucas, Last, Lucas we, have a question. we have a question about oh, please. this. Yeah, Bobby, Elizabeth. Um, so someone was asking, and I guess, you know, this would, this would be a good thing to say is, you know, when people are looking at, when schools are looking at financial aid and to, for people, do they consider people's, um, assets and finances for sure, but what about money's owed? So for instance, this person was asking if she, they already have a junior and freshman in college, um, how would that have an effect on financial aid? Is that, that a that is a great question. And let me just jump to the bottom line. The answer is yes. If you have multiple people in your household that are enrolled in college, that is an indicator that you need more help with uh, financial aid. So to jump to a bottom line, it's a great question. Thanks for popping in to ask it. Uh, if you, let's say, uh, and, and we have this at SPS, it's actually it's kind of a cool thing when it happens, you know, we'll have a mom daughter situation, you know, the daughter is a little bit younger, obviously, maybe did the more traditional route graduates from high school and enrolls at let's say Hunter or Brooklyn College and so they're enrolled and they're getting financial aid. Let's say the mom realizes, and, then, and, let, let, and, I, and I should have mentioned this in the beginning, you know, we're all going through the pandemic as well. So we have a lot of students that are saying, you know, uh, I just have a little bit more time on my hands. So uh, maybe now is the time to jump back into being a student. And so the mom will decide to go back to school because Uncle Sam's going to see two people in the household earning a bachelor's degree. That is going to increase the financial aid for the household. Does that answer it for you, Elizabeth? Yes. Thank you so much. But it is a good point to, uh, to make, you know, uh, a lot of this is dependent completely on uh, uh, an individual's own financial aid. As I usually joke, uh, you know, Bill Gates and his kids, are, they're not going to get a lot of federal financial aid, frankly, because, you know, they can pay out of pocket. Uh, just so that we're all aware, though, uh, 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 neither of them are enrolled at CUNY SPS. If, if they'd like to put their name on a building, that would be something else. But the ability for us to work 
with students much like yourself who are figuring out how do I afford this, you know, especially in these, and there's lots of words you can plug in, right? Uncertain, untenable times, you know, we are even more earnest right now uh, than before the pandemic about making sure that if you want to start at least with SPS, if you want to jump into our classes come January, that the financial uh, piece is not an obstacle for you. Uh, it's not on the slide, but I'll go ahead and just mention it. Uh, we've given out thousands and thousands, uh, it's a few hundred thousand these days in emergency grants for our students who are faced with all sorts of situations that again, before this pandemic hit, we just didn't realize we were gonna be faced with. And so at least at CUNY SPS, we put our proverbial uh, money where our mouth is and we have a lot of grants available to uh, current and new students coming in, even beyond the financial aid to make sure that uh, if there has, and, and, and my heart goes out to anybody in this situation, furloughs, uh, reduces in income, uh, loss of income, we have a, a, a great emergency grant process where we're able to uh, secure funds for you. And I don't even mean for tuition, I mean to help out with rent, I mean to help out with an electric bill uh, so that you can keep your enrollment in our institution. Uh, that's how far we've at least been willing to go at our campus. Uh, and it actually makes me proud to be at a place like CUNY School of Professional Studies that uh, again is willing to uh, show up and, and meet students uh, where their need is. Last but not least though, returning to my slide, a lot of schools are going to have specific and special tuition rates for adult learners. Uh, and that's very true for, for CUNY SPS as well. Uh, something that we do, uh, if you're not aware, CUNY in general already has very, very competitive. So let me be clear, what do I mean by competitive? Low. We have low tuition rates, affordable tuition rates. Uh, certainly if you compare CUNY to let's say a private uh, college in the New York City area, uh, I mean, night and day, night and day. You're looking at, you know, uh, 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 you know a sticker price uh, well into $50,000, $60,000 a year uh, at, at CUNY SPS, it's gonna be, uh, you know, a few grand a year. And again, that's, that's if you're not getting financial aid, you'd have to pay that out of pocket. That's just the tuition charge. And then of course we help with scholarships, grants, financial aid, especially uh, uh, on top of that. Another extra thing that we do is that if you're enrolled in a fully online bachelor's degree, you're always gonna pay the lower in-state tuition. So we have students from the great state of New Jersey and Connecticut, uh, and because our programs are fully online, you know, we have students in California, we have students in Texas, uh, we have students that started when they were in New York, but maybe because of job, military, whatever, they end up moving outside of the New York City area or New York State area. Guess what? If, if you're enrolled in a fully online program, your tuition stays exactly the same. And of course, on top of that, payment plans. And then one of my favorites, uh, we have well over 75% of our courses are listed as zero textbook courses. In other words, yes, you'll pay tuition, but you're not going to be hit with what can sometimes be a few hundred dollars in textbook costs. We very intentionally uh, made sure that we have uh, just a whole laundry list of courses with zero textbook costs. Myth number four I'd like to dispel for you. Will your life experiences, I gave you a little teaser at the, uh, at the top of the hour, will my life experiences matter to the college when, when, uh, when I transfer? A lot of students simply think that they will not. Uh, very happy to share with you this morning and dispel that at least at CUNY SPS, but this does go for a lot of colleges working with adult students. We have processes in place to help you turn that life, work, volunteer experience into viable, real college credits. Uh, at SPS, we have a whole thing in place where you take a, 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 one, a, a one three credit course, and in that course, you, do, you create a portfolio. And that portfolio is how you're going to show, uh, again, that 10 year of experience as a real estate agent or that 
half a dozen years of experience as a marketing agency, how can you have those evaluated, those experiences evaluated to translate into and equate into real college credits that inches you closer to that finish line. Lots of colleges, and of course this goes for SPS as well, we're also gonna be really happy to work with you to earn credits via examination. Of course, that saves on money, it saves on time, and some of these may be uh, even familiar to you. CLEP, Sailor, UXL, these, there's a ton of exams out there that we've already predetermined. You know, if you'd like to take this exam and that exam equals three credits over here in this area, you'll work with an academic advisor, uh, at least at CUNY SPS, that's our model, to say, oh, you know, how can I utilize exams? You never wanna just take the exam without talking to the advisor. Talk to the advisor first, make sure it fits into your degree plan, make sure that that exam, obviously if you pass the exam, is gonna inch you closer to that finish line. And last but not least, uh, lots of colleges, but again, CUNY SPS definitely included. We've already pre-evaluated tons and tons and tons of city agency, real estate licenses. Uh, you know, there's a whole laundry list at our website. We've pre-evaluated military, other industry-specific trainings for college credit. So this isn't an exam, this isn't creating the portfolio. You would just need to work with your advisor to say like, you know, at work, maybe you work for the city of New York and you've uh, done X, Y, or Z training. Has that already been evaluated as a three credit elective course? Uh, if it has, then that means that's three credits that you're, again, 120 being the goal, that's three credits closer to that goal. Um, and as you can see, our whole thing is inching you closer to that finish line with as much expediency as possible, but obviously doing it in a way that's smart and in a way that makes sense. Uh, you want to make sure that you're always checking in with an academic advisor. Uh, I'll do a plug for what Elizabeth is doing. If you have questions, of course, feel free to type those into the chat function. We'll get those answered for you as I roll into my last few slides, and then we can have a little bit of Q&A, uh, hopefully with what I'm discussing this morning is uh, getting those synapses firing or grab that extra coffee. Uh, I know I have mine but the ability to uh, get some questions answered for you uh, as I wrap up uh, the last few slides here, we're gonna be happy to do that. But myth number five, uh, and I should have mentioned, there are six myths, we're on myth number five. Myth number five is that a lot of students will come into my office and say, look, Lucas, you know, I was not a good student back in the quote unquote day, right? Uh, at SPS, we're pretty black and white about this. We posted our website, we need a certain GPA for you to gain admission. It's not just open enrollment, we do still need you to submit an application. That application needs to be complete and then be evaluated by an admissions committee uh, and, and, you know, I'll tell you exactly what it is because you can go to the website and see it. In general, we're looking for a 2.5 or higher cumulative GPA. If you're curious what cumulative means, it just means, you know, again, that one college, we're only looking at one GPA. But if you went to seven colleges, that means my office is going to calculate your cumulative GPA. And if it's at a 2.5 or higher, uh, then you have a pretty good chance of gaining admission to our fully online programs. But a lot of students will say, I didn't have that 2.5. You know, I was maybe focusing on, uh, you know, uh, uh, things outside the classroom when I was a freshman in college, but that was 10 plus years ago. Uh, you know, I've had a student look me in the face and say, are you really telling me that the, the person that I was 10, 15 years ago is now going to prevent me in moving forward with my goal of finishing a bachelor's degree. Uh, happy to tell you this morning is that uh, we have uh, 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 programs in place to help you get beyond that hurdle. So dispelling this myth is that, you know, if you weren't a good student, uh, maybe again, back in the day, so to speak, that that's just gonna be a, a huge door slamming in your face. Happy to let you know that at least at SPS, but I know other colleges have programs like this, uh, you know, we're going to wanna make sure to see if there are other avenues that we can exhaust to help you guide through the process. So you're going to have to submit all your transcripts. I don't wanna make it sound like we don't need your transcripts. 
We'll still need your transcripts, but in addition to those transcripts, we're always going to look at more than just grades, as I mentioned, the writing sample. But if your grades are simply not where they need to be for the admissions committee, we have an application uh, called the Jumpstart uh, application. And Jumpstart is a great way, essentially, uh, and, and certainly I'll share my contact information if anybody wants more information after today's presentation, but we can offer you admission to our fully online programs based on things you learned outside of the classroom. So a lot of students will say, well, what if I was a good student? What if I have a 3.5 or what if I have a 4.0? Uh, then maybe Jumpstart is not for you and you can apply just with the regular transfer application but if there is anybody in the room with me this morning, uh, or if you have friends and colleagues and they simply don't have that 2.5, Jumpstart is a great pathway for you. You essentially say, hey, Lucas, hey, admissions committee, uh, here are all my transcripts. You're gonna see I don't have that 2.5, but here are some other things that I have learned outside of the classroom. And has that learning been college level learning? We can take a look at that information as an admissions committee and then make a decision, an informed decision on whether or not you'll be offered admission. So not that admissions is guaranteed uh, in either scenario, but it's great to know that if you, again, just were not the best student uh, back in the day, that that door is not automatically uh, closed to you. And we're happy to work with you uh, with the Jumpstart uh, process. Last but not least, I, I do wanna mention, you know, students think sometimes, oh, I can only transfer in credits that, uh, you know, if I made an A in the course, that's definitely not true. You know, uh, if you're gaining admission to CUNY SPS or the colleges that, that you're applying to, uh, each college is a little bit different with uh, regard to their transfer credit policies, but most are going to, uh, you don't necessarily have to have secured an A in the class in order for it to count or in order for it to be considered for transfer uh, credit. I know at SPS, we're gonna make sure that we look at uh, your full credit. If you did obviously uh, maybe fail a course here or there in your academic history, those credits won't count. Uh, but again, you don't have to necessarily have an A in your class in order for it to count. And I'll also mention, it's not on the slide, but let me just mention real quick, a lot of students will sometimes wanna know, is there any way I can gain a sense of how my existing credits are gonna transfer in? The bottom line is when you get a transfer credit evaluation and the official formal that's really kind of serves as your roadmap you know point a to b point a being it's going to be my first semester i'm signing up for classes at cuny sps point b being you're finished with your diploma you're finished with your uh, degree you're graduating and you're securing that diploma but the unofficial credit evaluation is something we can do even before you apply so I'll make sure to share the contact information, but uh, it's a 30 minute appointment. If you secure an appointment, we can, obviously it's all done via Skype or over the phone these days, but we can walk you through an unofficial, just kind of gives you a really good understanding of how your existing credits might transfer over into one of our fully online bachelor's degrees. Again, unofficial is before you're admitted, and if you are admitted, we're gonna make sure that you get the official one. But I know a lot of folks, even before they say, oh, I don't wanna apply until I know how my credits are gonna come over, that's gonna be that unofficial transfer credit evaluation. Uh, you can actually go to the website this morning and request an appointment for that. Myth number six, and it is our last one. So thank you to everybody for hanging on with me uh, this, this morning. Uh, if you can't tell, I've had more than one cup of coffee, but I'm excited to be throwing a lot of information at you, but hopefully uh, a good amount of it is making sense and, and connecting in a way that gets you excited about potentially jumping back into the world of becoming a, a student. Uh, but even more so, especially if you're looking for online degrees, that's what at least at CUNY SPS we're all about. 
most colleges out there are going to have some part of their campuses that are devoted to adult learners and a lot of students uh, need the online piece in order to make it a reality. So myth number six, it's a very, very common one, is that I'm just not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to juggle returning back to school with my already busy life. Uh, I hear this day in and day out. Well, we don't work on the weekends, thankfully, but at least Monday through Friday, we oftentimes are working with students that feel, you know, it's just impossible. How do you want me, even in a pre-pandemic setting, you know, they have kids, they have a job, they're doing the commute, they're worrying about bills, they're worrying about uh, dinner. What are we gonna eat tonight? They don't have the time in their day to show up to a campus, you know, even if it is in the evenings, or even if it is just on the weekends, or even if it is only once or twice a week, uh, some places out there maybe even do it once or twice a month. At CUNY SPS, we are committed to the adult learner. It's in our mission uh, statement. Uh, you know, I always love it. CUNY has a really big mission statement, 25 campuses that make up the City University of New York. And CUNY's mission is to give access to higher education to the good people that make up the five boroughs that are New York City. SPS's mission within that larger mission is, yes, we want to do all of that, but we want to focus on the adult learner. We want to focus on students, much like yourselves, I imagine, that simply don't have the time to be a full-time student. Or even if they are gonna be a part-time student, you know, I work downtown, I don't have time to commute all the way to uh, a different borough to take classes, and then maybe I live in a third borough. Uh, we get it, and that's why uh, at least for 15 years now, we've been the vanguard school within CUNY for online education. This wasn't, uh, we didn't exist and then say, oh, let's, let's start an online program. We essentially were, were founded. Uh, we were started within the City University of New York system to be CUNY's online school and to be a place for adult learners. And so CUNY SPS is a great example of a place that helps you to juggle your already busy life and then also taking the time to work on your education. Flexibility is that key word, right? Your classes at SPS, you know, because sometimes people will ask and I'm always happy to tell them, it, it, you know, there might be a few times within your education at SPS that you need to be at a computer at a certain time, but our courses, our online courses, are not synchronous. They are what is described as asynchronous. That means that, you know, if you work the night shift and you want to log into your class, you know, at midnight, uh, you know, before you go in, that's when your class starts. If you are an early bird and you get up at 5 a.m. to start your class, that's when your class starts. If you're like me and you just wanna find that hour at lunch to do something, or I get it, we all, well, a little less so than, than, than normal, but hopefully we'll get back to normal. You know, if you're on the subway for an hour every day or something like that, or on Metro North or uh, LIRR, you name it, I think I got most of them, uh, you're gonna be able to log on to your class to do your reading. The online piece is just critical to making sure that adult learners are able to still secure uh, their educations, but in a way that's convenient, in a way that's flexible. And so I oftentimes joke, you know, uh, you know, your, 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 your kitchen table, your hopefully you have a comfy spot in your living room, uh, wherever you grab your laptop, wherever you grab your iPad, wherever you grab your phone. I know you're going to do a lot of reading on your phone at times when you're on the subway, wherever you are able to access your devices in your downtime, that's when your class is, is, is starting. And so that asynchronous model uh, is, is going to be critical to you making all of this come together as a reality. Last few uh, points. As an online student, you're never going to be required to physically come to campus for your classes. You know, I mentioned we have students in California. I mentioned we have military. You know, it would literally be impossible to show up to Midtown Manhattan. 
uh, for a course, so fully online. Uh, sometimes I'll have students say, well, fully online still, but, but I'm still gonna have to come to campus maybe once a week. No, fully online. Fully online, but I'm still gonna have to come to campus maybe one time a month or one time a semester. No, fully online means exactly that. For your coursework, it is gonna be uh, you logging in wherever you're at. All of that said though, I wanna make sure you understand online is not to be synonymous with faceless. Uh, don't think of online as, as, as being the same as not having a support, a community support. We have an entire staff of faculty, uh, administrators, my office. Right now we're all working from home like, like many, many people are. But when we return back to normal, we're in that building on 31st Street that I already mentioned. And you have lots of folks in that building, financial aid, bursar, registrar, academic advisors, academic faculty, you know, sometimes it just feels good to drop by your campus and, uh, you know, maybe make sure that your payment plan is up to date, check in with your academic advisor. Uh, you know, we do still have some of the more traditional things like student organizations and clubs. We have a great student services uh, uh, office that helps everything from uh, uh, students with disabilities, veterans, active ma uh, military, uh, you name it. Uh, we have a student newspaper. So some of those things that you might think are not going to be available to you, even though you're still in a fully online program, uh, don't think that you, know, uh, uh, you are able to still take advantage of the fully online piece to, to work into your busy life, but at the same time, you're gonna have a ton of student support services made available to you so that by the end of uh, your semester, by the end of your time at SPS, you feel really good about having that network and you'll look behind you as, as is often the case. Uh, and you're gonna see a lot of people that help to get you to that finish line. Uh, of course, family and of course, friends, but you're also going to see uh, a whole team of folks at SPS who uh, have supported you and helped to drive you towards that finish line. Uh, thrown a lot at you. We're at about 39 minutes of me talking nonstop. Uh, 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 I don't know when, where, uh, but I picked up the, the gift of gab, as my mom would say. Uh, it serves me well as an admissions director, though, uh, because part of my job, and this is the part that I really, really enjoy the most, is engaging with students much like yourself who maybe are on the precipice, maybe are right on that you know, is now the time? Should I be thinking about jumping back into becoming a student? So let me throw a few quick facts at you. We do have a semester that starts January 29. Uh, that is the official spring semester, first day of classes, your online classes, January 29th. If you want to jump into our fully online programs, we have a deadline of December 1st. Uh, but we also have one more information session, uh, which is going to uh, really give you lots and lots of more detail about how to apply and whatnot. And if you are in that information session on December 2nd, obviously we'll honor the December, the December 1st deadline. Uh, and last but not least, let me throw up the contact information for my office. Uh, notice I'm not giving you a phone number where you'll leave a voicemail, I'm giving you our texting number. Part of the reason we uh, text is we know we're all busy, even in a COVID world. Sometimes it's easier to just shoot a quick text. Someone on my team is going to receive that. Uh, if you send us a text at 9 p.m., we probably won't respond, but we'll respond, uh, right? I mean, we won't respond that evening, but we'll respond the next day. Uh, I'm going to check in with Elizabeth now to see if we want to do some Q&A or see uh, if we want to round out uh, folks' understanding of some of these myths and hopefully we've dispelled most of them for you this morning. Thank you so much, Lucas. This was really great information and really answered so many questions and I'm sure so many of our attendees have, but we still have more questions. So um, let me ask some of those of you. Um, Edward wanted to know, he has an associate's degree of total 72 credits. Um, is there a limit? I know you mentioned that we there is an opportunity for life experience credits. Is there a limit on that? Yes, there is. I, uh, uh, 18 credits. So in other words, um, two numbers I'll make sure everyone knows. Uh, and, and Edward's smart to point out, 
you know, uh, I mentioned for us, you know, you need the 24. If you have 60, that's fine. <laughs> you know, that means you're only even closer to that goal of 120. Uh, you can transfer up to 105 and 18 is the cap on the number of credits you can have uh, from life experience, 18. But note that 18 is actually more than a full semester. Uh, to be a full-time student is at least 12 credits. You're considered full-time. Uh, you know, so 18, that's over one full semester that you would be able to lock in based on life experience. That's a great question now. Terrific, thank you. Um, we also have a question. Can classes be taken in one's own pace or do you need to matriculate um, as a traditional college? Yeah, so the I think you're the I'll focus on that phrasing at one's own pace. That's the best way to think about it. You know, we have students um, that will come in and they'll say, you know what? I I don't I don't want to waste any more time. I'm in my first semester. I'm very comfortable with online. Maybe we use a system called Blackboard. And so they're they're familiar with discussion boards and, and they feel really confident. I, they're gonna take four or five classes in their first semester. And as long as there is wasn't anything flagged in their admissions application, we don't have any problem with that. You know, that's gonna be one person's pace. Lots of other students out there will say, you know, Hey, Lucas, uh, last time I was in a classroom was in a physical building in the 80s. <laughs> you know, for that student, and, and it's a no judgment zone, right? We, we don't care about the timing and, you know, we're, we're focused on the here and now. But if that student's been offered admission, we're probably not going to suggest that they take four or five classes right out of the gate. Maybe start with one or two, uh, especially if it's your first online class experience, but your own pace, that's a great way to think about it. Maybe after that first semester, you a lot more comfortable for just one class. You should also end up at your own pace. We follow a pretty traditional fall and spring. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that though, winter and summer. So you can always take advantage of winter and summer sessions if you want to take a few classes. Some students say, you know, summer's my own. I'm going to focus on my family. Maybe one day we'll be on planes and do normal vacations again. I, I'm sure like everybody, I hope we all get there soon with these Absolutely. vaccines I see on the news, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I know, right? Amen to that. But yeah. the ability to you know, uh, maybe you want to do part-time summer, you know, maybe you want to take a class here or there, you know, at your own pace is the way to think about that for sure. Terrific. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Someone asked that they have a BA and considering a BA in nutrition, can that be done at SPS? Unfortunately, we don't have a nutrition program per se. Our health science programs are health service administration, health information management. We do have a full bachelor's of science in nursing. Uh, but I would encourage that student, if you have something super nuanced, uh, you know, or, or you're after a specific bachelor's degree, go to the main CUNY website. And as you can imagine, with 25 campuses, uh, it is thousands of individual programs. Uh, I will say it might not be fully online. We're the campus that has the fully online programs. Uh, but if you need, uh, and certainly contact my office. If we don't have it, we can try to put you in touch with one of the other campuses that might have it. Wonderful. Thank you, Lucas. And, and in, in line with that, Maria asked, where can I get a list of course offerings for CUNY SPS? Sure, yeah, well, uh, certainly uh, email us and we'll, we'll, we'll send you the link. But if you go to CUNY, or I'm sorry, usually I tell people to Google it, just Google CUNY SPS, you're going to find our website. And we're going to, uh, if you click on academics, you're going to find that full listing of undergraduate programs. Uh, I don't know, well, uh, am I able to share my screen to do that or? Yeah, absolutely. Is the website sps.cuny.edu? You know, I go to it so often, yeah. I don't know it off the top of my head. <laughs> I, did share, I did share in the chat the admissions email, the text number, um, and that website as well. So people can go, go ahead and access that there too. 
We have a question. Um, do you mind if I go ahead and ask a question while you pull of that course. up? Yeah. Okay. So um, people wanted to know, in fact, I had a couple of these questions. What is the cost per credit? Sure, let me pull that up for you very quickly. Uh, and while I'm doing that, I should also mention uh, payment plans are critical. We know that a lot of folks, even with CUNY's low tuition rates, uh, payment plans are just something that a lot of our students will take advantage of. Uh, the earlier that you get in, the, early, the more time you have with payment plans. And so we always do encourage students that if they're interested in that, to let us know pretty darn fast because if you wait till the very end, you're just limiting yourself on the timing of payment plans and whatnot. The undergraduate tuition rates, which of course, for folks in the room that are looking to secure their bachelor's degrees, I think I dropped just for a second there. Am I still with you? Yep, you're there. You're with us. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, online degrees are going to be completely, uh, you always pay the lower in-state rate. And so for part-time students, that's 305 per credit hour. And a typical class is going to be three credits. So 305 times three for one class. If you do happen to be a full-time student, uh, which is going to be 12 or more credits, but again, a lot of our students, just to be very clear, because of their, uh, they're juggling uh, everything we said they were juggling earlier, uh, you know, they're going to be part-time. But if you do have 12 credits, you'll pay 3465 per semester. So uh, the lower in-state is 305 per credit or 3465 per semester. You only pay that that 3000 number though, once you hit 12 credit hours. And so most of our students are only taking one or two classes a semester. So that's why really the, the when it comes to the out of pocket expense, you know, you have to do the financial aid if there's any scholarships or grants involved. At the end of the day, though, anything not covered is your out of pocket. But the main number we're starting with is 305 per credit hour. Terrific. Thank you. And I do want to confirm that sps.cuny.edu is the website. Um, Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Rob, you're welcome. It is in the chat and I'll also be sending it. Uh, you'll all receive an email uh, 24 hours from now that will have all that information, the contact and the website there too. So you can be able to check out everything. Will, will people be able to find more about the Jumpstart program and activities on the website as well? Yes, specifically at the admission section of the website. There's a lot of information on uh, how to apply. There's information on, um, you know, the uh, how to submit your transcripts. Uh, I should have mentioned, uh, 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 so let me mention it now. Uh, right now, electronic is best. <laughs> we have unfortunately a lot of students that are slowing down the process of hearing about their admissions decision because they're having their transcripts sent to us uh, in paper form. Right now, we are still processing transcripts. It's just going, of course, more slowly than normal because uh, uh, we don't have a full you know, staffing in, in a physical building. So, uh, and, and I, ki I kid you not, it's, it's a, I feel like 9.9 .9 out of 10 times, the colleges that you attended will normally be able to send your academic records, your transcripts to my office electronically. And when that happens, we're just able to, we're just able to process so much faster. Uh, I'll also mention there may be folks in the room who have attended a CUNY campus before. My office will actually, as a courtesy to you, pull your CUNY transcript. So let me be clear, if someone in the room, and hopefully this is at least a, a few of you, if you're excited about the things I'm describing this morning and you want to apply for transfer admission and you went to Hunter and you went to BMCC, as a courtesy, I'm gonna go into the system and try to pull those transcripts for you so that you don't need to worry about it. Again, you, you're, I'm sure everyone's picked up on this. We've clearly tried to create ways so that if we can make it faster and easier for you as an adult learner, that's what we're all about. I cannot, 
unfortunately pull for SUNY, State University of New York. Uh, it's not one big common system. So if you went to SUNY Binghamton or uh, you know maybe a, a, a SUNY campus out on Long Island, I cannot pull those. And of course, if you went to like a private, if you went to Columbia or NYU, I, I can't pull those. But I'm always gonna try to pull your CUNY. We send an email to you letting you know if you're missing anything, even if it's just one document, we let you know what we're missing. And then as soon as you get that in, we can complete you and make a decision. Terrific, thank you so much. You know, before we end, Lucas, there's one thing I just wanted to highlight because I, I really think um, it's, a, it's a big point of difference right now is that, you know, so many schools are going to online, mm -hmm. but CUNY SPS has been online. Correct. And so you have the experience, um, it's a smooth process. You know how to connect students with their professors through the online process. And look, experience yeah. experience is, is a value. So I just wanted to highlight that. Yeah. Because I thought that was a very um, key thing that you shared. Of course, and, and thank you for uh, uh, re-highlighting it because you're right. You know, this is not, the, uh, our online degrees, and I should mention they are all fully accredited. Uh, we actually just had our accreditation visit. Uh, it's, it's always funny to me. I chuckle about I've done this, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, excuse the baby face, but I've done it for 20 years. Used to work for colleges down in Texas, where I originally am from, work for colleges in the DC Baltimore area, and now I'm in New York City. We are actually accredited by the same accrediting body that accredits Harvard. <laughs> so I always think school people say like, oh, online, you know, is my diploma going to say online? Nope, it's not, just so that we're all aware. When you cross that stage, you know, I'm always a half, uh, glass half full kind of guy. So I'm assuming everybody in here is going to be excited. You're going to jump back into finishing your bachelor's degree. So it's not if, but when you cross that stage, whether it's SPS or wherever you're graduating from, at least at CUNY SPS, it'll say you have a bachelor's degree, bachelor's of arts, a bachelor's of science, from the City University of New York, conferred by the School of Professional Studies. Won't mention anything about online, and of course, we're fully accredited. Uh, but I know folks always wonder that. Is it going to say online? No, no, it will not. Right. No, well, thank not. you for confirming that. Look, you do the work, you get the reward, and it's really, really that simple. You put the effort in, and, and you can have that success. So, Lucas, thank Gloria. you so much. It was really very generous of your time to, to go through and dispel these myths that really are serving to hold people back, and you've really opened the door so that people can go for their dreams and, and make their, their wants of, of going back to college a reality. So thank you so much for joining us today. And yes, it's been my pleasure. And my, my last statement will be, you know, I know sometimes it can be overwhelming. Uh, uh, and I really should have said this in the beginning. My heart goes out to, to all of you. Uh, you know, we, we have weekly check-ins, of course, on the admissions team. And uh, it's tough. Uh, uh, we, we, we shouldn't kid ourselves. We're all going through a thing. <laughs> yeah, I think we yeah. should be proud that, that we're, we, we've done so. Uh, Elizabeth and I were actually even just joking before we started the session, you know, some days thriving, some days just surviving, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> hopefully we will get through it. And uh, I applaud everyone in the room. If you are able to determine for yourselves that now is the time for you to become a student again, my office's commitment is to just help you to get there. You know, uh, we try to anticipate your questions and remove those obstacles. So it's been a pleasure, uh, just as much of a pleasure for me this morning, Elizabeth. Wonderful, Lucas. And I thank you so much to all of our attendees. We're thrilled that you spent some of your morning with us. And as I said, you will be getting the contact information so that you can find more out about CUNY SPS. Uh, we also have recorded this and the recording will be available on the Schneps Media YouTube channel. So you can watch it again and you can share it with others that you know are interested in, in, in their career in, of college. So again, thank you everyone for being here. Please everyone stay safe, stay healthy and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Goodbye now.